Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and operator of CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the phone number in the description. Um, but my stack is 600. Um, I open under the gun, mm-hmm. uh, ace of spades, queen of clubs to 15. Okay. Hero, UTG to 15, ace of clubs, queen of spades? Uh, ace of spades, queen of clubs, ace. but uh, it, okay. it's irrelevant. For, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, Open to 15, uh, both the spots fold. Um, the cutoff calls, the button calls, um, they're both uh, mid-20s aggressive agents. Um, small blind calls and the big blind calls. Okay, so the pot is like 75, something like that? Yeah, we're going five ways to the flop. And I don't really have too much history with any of the villains in the hand. Um live okay. but the big blind we have a little bit of history online he's a crusher of on uh, 500 nl on uh, wsop.com like 21 wait a minute he's a he's a 500 nl crusher which means that i think that means 510 doesn't it online no two five two five so he's a he's an online crusher of two five and he's playing 500 cap at the block right now? Yeah, correct. So uh, I learned after talking to him later on the session, this was actually, he's only played 30 hours total of live. Okay, so I guess he could just be getting his feet wet, you mean? It's just surprising because the level of play online is going to be much, you know, incredible. If you can beat, if you're a crusher of 2-5 online in Nevada, like you would not be playing 2-5 live, but okay. Greg, I and mean, he, he definitely had some, some very obvious live tells with like handshaking and things like that, but his play was very solid overall. And which, in what position is this guy in? He's in the big line. He completes. Okay. okay. Um, so we go five ways to a flop. Flop is uh, queen of spades, ten of clubs, four of hearts. Okay. Um, big blind quickly checks. Mm-hmm. Now I had opened. I, I had opened pretty aggressively in this game. Um, more often I would have picked up a, a, a bunch of solid hands, and I'd gone multi way several times and had missed the flop or the board texture was such that I couldn't see that. And so I just checked. Mm -hmm. Um, In this hand, 90% of the time, I'm obviously see betting ace-queen here for value. Mm -hmm. I checked for deception to make my checking range stronger um, and to make one of the um, aggro guys behind me bet with a draw or a worse hand. How terrible is this to sometimes check ace-queen here? It's not I me. Mean, it's not terrible. I I think that that what you're thinking of in is in line of more doing that with over pairs on ragged boards. Like if the board came out, you know, eight deuce four, and you had pocket kings or pocket aces. The the reason sure. why I I don't check here as much is because like what are they gonna stab with that aren't that isn't gonna call you to a flop bet anyways. Sure, and, and that's what I was thinking about after the hand was that a lead is just better here because Jack nine, King Jack, some tens, Queens are all going to call anyway. Yeah, but I mean, I don't think it's terrible. Um, I mean, it's a rainbow board. Um, you know, you have Ace Queen. You don't have to protect against a whole lot, but right. obviously, you're going to be check calling here. So, sure. So, I mean, that that was the plan. Uh-huh. Um, unfortunately, it does check through. Okay. Um, the turn is the three of hearts. And the big blind thinks about it for a few seconds. Normally, he'd been six seconds very quickly, and he checked. Um, so I elect, obviously, to bet here. I bet 55 into 75. Okay. Um, it folds the button, uh, looks me up and down, ends up calling. And the big blind thinks about it for five to ten seconds, and he check raises to 170. Okay. Um, thoughts on... Anything here? I mean, I mean, you certainly played your hand like you're not super strong by checking the flop, although I suppose you could have some sets here and you block like pocket queens and things like that. It's interesting that he check raises turn here to 170. I mean, I guess he could have some sort of combo draw, but he could have been. The other thing to look at this hand is sort of your position. And what I mean by that is, is that this is a lot different than if you were, say, on the button. Let's say that you were on the button and he was in the blind, right? And he checked you on the flop and you checked it back. I could see him going for a check raise on the turn a lot more than where you actually are from. Because where you're actually from is is that you're from under the gun. So you checked the flop and everyone else checked behind. So you everybody at the table already has the information that 
Everyone else has acted after the preflop raiser. If you raise on the button, no one has acted after you. So if you were on the button right. and it got checked through and I were him, I could see check raising turn because we're entirely no no one's acted yet, you know what I'm saying? As a natural check to the preflop raiser. Here everybody checked behind you. So I wouldn't tend to go for a check raise all that much for like with a value hand here. So yeah, he could have some sort of combo-ish type of draw. You said you started 540 effective, something like that? Yeah, 540, 540 effective with him, yeah. I mean, he's probably going to be pretty wide in the big blind, meaning that you know he's going to have all his queen 10 offs. He could have pocket fours, might have pocket tens that he doesn't three bet off some of the time. He could even have three, four suited. There's a lot of two pair hands that he could have here. Now, if you think he's that good and he recognizes the situation, there he you could have a lot of draws here that he might play this with too, with like hearts, jack nine and king jack. I mean, you bet fifty five and a seventy five, so the pot is one thirty. You have about four seventy left. So if you treat his one seventy almost like an all in, you know, you've got what did I say? You've got uh four seventy left in the pot, one ten, one eighty four. Yeah, he had like three forty five behind. Something like that. He had 345 behind. I'm just I'm saying, like, if you bet, let's say you bet 55 and he jammed all in, right? So that's sort of what this kind of raise is like. And then I would look at the, you know, I'd look at the pot odds. So 55 and 75 is 130. And say he jams for like 500, right? Is it, or yeah, so it would be like, it, it, it would be like, uh, what, 680, like 420 to call, something like that. Right. What, what did you say he started with, what, so we can get the graphics it, correct? It would be three. It would be three forty-four to call. He he started the hand uh, on the river. He has three forty-five. It was one seventy on the turn. Um, so that's five fifteen and then fifteen three flops. So no, but I'm saying that. But what, after he makes it one seventy, he's got three forty behind. Yeah, I think he had three forty-four behind. Right. So you're calling one twenty plus three forty. I mean, it's not three. You right. know, what I'm, you know, what I'm saying. I'm I'm yeah, just right, saying right, that. Right, right. I would. Right, I might right. just treat this as an all in here. Because I mean. You're gonna call and then do what? I mean, if you call the 170, the pot's gonna be like 425. He's gonna have 345 left. I mean, I just think with these stack sizes, I would just probably tr you're gonna have way less than you're gonna have less than a pot size bet, right? With 340 Correct. and it's three quarters of a pot size bet. I mean, I guess you could go call call here too, uh, but once you call, it really does look like. You have something now. Maybe you could have backdoor hearts here as well. But, I mean, here's the thing. Like, if you didn't give me the background on this guy, and I don't know if it's sort of I'm, I'm kind of we're loading this hand because you gave me this background, I would just say fold. Sure. People aren't really going to do this that much at 2-5. If you're saying that he's uh, somehow a good player and he found himself into this game, I do find his line kind of odd, and I might just go right. with it either by jamming or call calling. I mean, just to give you an idea, he's a 21-year-old kid, 22-year-old kid, hoodie, like uh, very online looking. You know what I mean? I mean, if, if this guy was 75 years old drinking a coffee, I'm just going to snap my fist. But because of his image, and again, at these stakes, I mean, you know, like we don't see too many bluffs here, but because of I changed venues, you know, the, the game is much more shallow. I'm used to playing at least 150 big blinds deep. It, it kind of created an awkward situation where – I'm at like the top of my range, but and he can also have combo draws. So I felt like it was one of those hands where I, I just couldn't fold it to that price. Does that make sense? Well, okay. I mean, like I said, I mean, you can call, you could jam, but what, I mean, why call as opposed to jam? Like what's, you think, you think if you call, you're going to induce a bluff from him on the river? No, and I, I do think jamming is better than calling. Mm -hmm. um, at the time I did call. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think Jimmy's more correct. Obviously, he's going to call up those combo draws, and he's going to fold any sort of like. Well, that was what I was thinking too, though. Is like, what if he took this line with like King Jack with one heart or Nine Jack with a heart? Yeah. If I do jam there, he will fold those hands. Correct. I mean, you would assume so. That if you had what? What was that again? If he had Nine Jack or King Jack with uh -huh. one heart, yeah, I think it's you know likely that he would complete those in the big line. I mean, he could take those as a bluff. Well, he so could take. I, I, he I might take those as a bluff if a heart comes. I guess. I mean, but 
your hand sometimes looks like it's a heart. For some reason, people are confused in the chat. Again, the action is up here on the screen. The hero is under the gun, and he checked the flop, and it got checked through. And the turn, the big blind checked again in the hero bet, and the button called, and now this guy check raises. And my contention here is that if I was in the spot of this guy in the big blind, I probably wouldn't be doing a whole lot of check raising with value hands because the preflop raiser is under the gun and everyone has already acted after him on the flop. Different from if the preflop raiser was on the button and everyone naturally checked to him where you have no information about the actual actions of the rest of the people in the field because they're naturally checking. So... So you call. So what? And I, the button folds too. And by the way, yeah, the too. Button. By the way, you actually might price the button into some sort of draw too by calling. But okay, so the button folds. Right. So the button folds and the river is off to four. Okay. And, well, that's going to be the, the best one, card yeah. in the deck for you, right? I mean, if you played it this way. Yeah. Sure. So uh, he jams, and I obviously call because I, after calling a turn, I feel like can't fold the river, and he had quad force. Yeah, quad fours. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, again, who knows? Uh, the only, I mean, the only thing that I'm going to take away from this is that, I mean, okay, the guy's a crusher. Maybe he's just trying to get his feet kind of wet live. But 99.9% .9 of the time, if a guy is playing at this level, this could be the exception. He's not the crusher that everybody thinks, or there's a reason why he's playing at that level, basically. Um, sure. And... and you know, I mean, and, that's uh, that's all I can say about it. So I maybe crusher is the wrong word. He he, I mean, he six tables one two and two five online. You know, five six days a week. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Thanks for the call. Hey guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button, and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA200. Click on the link right there.